The 205th Brigade arrives at Camp McCoy from 28 cities in Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Its units range from the oldest in the United States Army to the newest. The Old Guard is here, and the 14th Artillery, the 17th Infantry, the 409th, and the 410th. The 33rd Armor and the 4th Cav are represented. There are engineers to build bridges, searchlight companies to light them, smoke companies to conceal them. There are military police, military intelligence, and military public information units. An aviation company to fly the choppers and the gunships. A support battalion to link them all together. The brigade brings with it the battle-hardened veteran, the decorated officer, the army-wise sergeant, and the raw recruit. The immediate mission will be to weld these units and these men into a cohesive, mobile, self-supported striking force. To one man, the mission is paramount, for he must prove his unit's worth. Barber, Arnold T., Brigadier General, Commanding. The mission of this brigade is to move from our assembly area at this point and move into a mobile defense with preparation of launching attack. For the intelligence, we have this information at this time. We have two mechanized battalions to our front. They're located generally in these two areas. We have two tank battalions that have been reported moving down this highway here. Lights burn through the night. Orders are on the way. The mission, Jack Pine 1. In the war room at Corps headquarters, each unit of the brigade becomes a box or circle or flag or pin on the huge situation map. Radios crackle urgent commands, nerves tingle, the pulse pounds, the brigade breathes. The garage will go to the field. It will turn twisted metal into functional parts. In the motor pool, routine maintenance is now top priority. Emergency aid packs, plasma, bandages, information tags, and medications are moving down a hasty production line in the medical company. The materiel, the men, the machines are moving on the mission. Field rack, generators, communications wire, and crated ammunition, reaching a rendezvous at dawn. Second platoon, Charlie Company. Fourth battalion, 33rd Armor. Commanded by Lieutenant Dale John Wirth, a 26-year-old officer trained at Fort Knox and rising through the ranks to a commission. Like many armor officers or tank commanders, Wirth teaches tactics which take advantage of the tank's mobility, firepower, and brawn. A tank has actual and psychological powers. Worth will use all of them in his mission. Come 
Budget Niner. This is Glamour Budget Niner 2. Fire mission. Hey, can open. Hell, hey, can. Here's quick. The artillery. Bravo, Speed and four, power. One, one, zero. Bravo sight, plus four. Bravo sight, plus four. Deflection, two, seven, three, two, quadrant, two, eight, seven. Center one round, battery one round in effect. Artillery units are trained to react instantly. Crews receive a mission, pull off the road, train the howitzers on a target perhaps seven miles away. Umpires and evaluators mark score sheets, adding to the pressure. Three rounds will be fired for record. The air attacks have finished. The shelling has died away. The infantry will take the high ground. The infantry waits, wept, worn, weary, in the mist of dawn. The infantry feels its belly churn in the moments before attack. The infantry moves on foot in the driving rain or in the treacherous quiet of the sun-dappled wood. He is called a dog face. He carries his home upon his back, marches through three pair of boots, lives off the land, sleeps where he can, eats from a brown box labeled Neil Combat. He is fair target from the concealed bunker, the long-range gun, the mortar, and from the sky behind the hill. separate infantry brigade has infinite capability. It can launch an armor spearhead, command artillery, feed and clothe itself, establish its own communications, and through its powerful generators, light an entire city. Combat engineers build bridges of every description. Their bridges carry tanks, trucks, equipment, supplies, and men. The infantry is on the move. firepower is not enough. It must be mobile. The 106 millimeter recoilless rifle meets such requirements. It is jeep mounted. It packs an armor piercing punch from 8,500 yards.
The weapon is a massive 4.2-inch mortar, mounted on the carrier or fired from the ground. It will hurl its shell 6,000 yards with pinpoint accuracy. Number two, deflection. Zero, seven, niner, five. In its role as a self-supporting force, the brigade must care for itself on the attack, on the defense, and in grim moments of tragedy. It replies with intensively trained professionals in its medical company. It responds to the urgent call with ambulance and helicopter. Time is precious. The skilled corpsmen will waste none of it. Their techniques are far advanced from those used in World War II and in Korea. And to the rear, the surgeons are ready. They will complete the business of saving lives. Beefy and burly, he commands a recon platoon. Schiebler, William J., 1st Lieutenant, 3rd Infantry, 26. Ranger, paratrooper. His specialty is an old one, forged behind rock walls and hedgerows, sharpened in countless gullies and along a thousand dusty roads, home in the jungles of Vietnam. Bill Schiebler's specialty is the quick kill, ambush. Citizen soldiers are going home, and with them ratings which range from excellent to superior. The combat veterans, the decorated officers, the army-wise sergeants, and the raw recruits are moving with a purpose. freedom's flag as they have since Concord Bridge. They carry on the rich and hard-won traditions of Breed's Hill and Red Beach One, of Cowpen and Bellow Wood, of Utah and Hill 609, of the Han and of the Rhine. In the weeks and months that follow, they will continue to train. For if they are called again, they must be ready. These men of the brigade. <laughs> 